Welcome. Today I'll be walking you through Universal Discovery and Universal CMDB's capability to discover and model information from multiple clouds and from containerized and classic technologies. What I'm showing here is the CMS UI. It is a dashboard that provides visibility to the data that has been discovered via Universal Discovery or captured through integrations. An out-of-the-box capability of Universal Discovery is to capture data from multiple data sources and to display it in UCNDB via this dashboard. Multiple technologies can be captured and displayed at the same time, such as Google Cloud, AWS, Azure, and Kubernetes. You can also use this screen to be able to modify the cards the way that you like it and uh, change the view of the data that you see on the screen to be what you need. Changes that you make are um, saved for that particular user, so the next time they come into this screen, the changes they made will be visible to them. In this particular example, we're going to drill into AWS to take a look at information that has been discovered there and the relationships between them. We now see the contents of the view, which contain a collection of resources discovered by Universal Discovery. You can see the EC2 Unix boxes captured here, as well as their VPC, and also the RDS services that were captured and discovered. Keep in mind, this is only a small example of the full scope of discovery for AWS from Universal Discovery. There's far more that can be discovered. This is just the view that we are showing here. Once you have this view, you can drill down into the various components to see what parts are associated with that component, such as the volume and EBS, the IP addresses, and the machine image that was used to make up that particular device. You can also view the properties of each and every one of the CIs on the screen. You're first shown a subset of all the properties, but you can drill into them and be able to see the full screen that describes everything. In the case of AWS and a collection of other technologies, we also captured their tags, which is essentially an extended attribute that the customer has captured themselves. We display them all in this location, as well as other attributes such as their cloud instance ID and the node model, in this case, a T3 medium. Back to the view, we can now apply a policy against this particular view to ensure that this view meets the requirements of our enterprise. In this case, we'll want to evaluate whether the EBS instances that we have in this, this view actually are encrypted, and we can do that simply by selecting the policy and applying it to this view. We'll see right away that there is one instance that's compliant and one instance that's not compliant. We can get a little bit more data by actually drilling into this particular data set as well as and see what, what the problem was. So this particular volume was, is not encrypted. Returning to the CMS UI dashboard, I can now add the results of that policy applied to that view um, to my screen so that I can see that at a future time. You can see now that I see the results of the policy, the one that was non-compliant, the one that was compliant, and I can view this every time I come into my screen as the results are refreshed for the current status of that policy applied to that view. Okay, we're now going to take a look at an example of an end-to-end -end service map. And a service map is a collection of components that provide a specific service to a customer. In this case, we're looking at the WordPress service, which is made up of a collection of API resources from AWS, an RDS database, a server, and a collection of access points through a URL. You can view this service in context of its relationships, or you can view this service in the form of a report. When you look at the report, you would see all of the attributes that have been configured to be displayed for that particular report. Okay, another benefit of a service map is that you can model the impact of a component of the service becoming unavailable on the rest of the application. In this particular example, we're going to take this particular method down and take a look at what the impact is for the overall application. 
You do that by clicking on the impact simulation widget, set the criticality to high, and then view its impact on the overall application. Since I brought this, app, this component down, the impact flowed all the way up to the business application indicating that it was no longer available. The capability of impact analysis is useful in two use cases. The first one is that in the form of a change, you can predict the impact of that change to the overall service. So you can communicate with those who will be impacted and make sure that they're aware of the change that's coming up. The second use case is to model the impact of a down system so that you understand the ramifications of a particular component becoming unavailable or can follow the flow of a problem to its root cause. An important note is that SMAX users have the same capability with the CMS built-in impact analysis widgets that are now part of SMAX. Now we'll shift to the inventory view, which provides a collection of cards, each card with its own topic. We're going to be talking about software inventory, which displays the results of UD's ability to discover installed software based on machine learning and a file system scan. Universal Discovery has the ability to capture over 130,000 software titles, and it does this using a, a scan of the file system, which generates a signature used by machine learning to translate into an installed software element. These installed software elements are then visible on this report. You can see the list of installed software, what vendor published it, the system, where it's installed, the usage percentage, and the type of software, whether it's free or commercial. We also show the node to which that software is installed, and new with the November 2020 release, we will be able to discover installed software on a Docker image, which is then used to deploy and create containers, allowing you to know what software is installed on what containers. Knowing what software is installed is important for customers in their software asset management use cases to ensure that the software they're using matches the vendor contracts and terms that they have signed with the vendor who provided that software. Once you have this list, you can drill down further based on particular questions you might have of the data that you had. For instance, if you're curious if any of your servers are still using the Oracle JRE, you can search for the JRE software and find the results. Based on this filter, you can see there are a collection of systems that are still using the commercial Oracle JRE, and you would want to work with them to get them onto a free version of the same capability. It's important to note that you will be liable for software that's installed on resources that are both on-premise as normal and on cloud. And so you need a software discovery tool that can discover installed software in both locations. Once you have this data, it's then possible to push it to other asset management tools, including the MicroFocus Asset Manager solution, as well as the SMAX ITAM solution. For this next demo, we'll go back to the inventory card list and enter the workstations inventory card. This card contains the results of endpoint discovery that was performed at MicroFocus and is on all of our PCs. While I'm showing only 11 entries in my sample data here, it's important to note that Universal Discovery is highly scalable. We have customers with hundreds of thousands of endpoints and more than 100,000 servers. This report allows you to see details of the discovered endpoints, such as their OS and the model and the serial number. You can also see things like the users that are able to access that system, um, the IP addresses that might be available and been discovered for that particular system, as well as the installed software that is noted to be available on that system. When we have more information than can be displayed in one page, we put this convenient more info item so that you can uh, look, drill deeper into the system as you need it. Finally, if you are looking to filter out this data so that you can identify specific use cases, you can use the filtering capability to perform this function. In this case, we're going to look for the systems that are running Windows 7 because we know that these systems must be updated soon. 
we've now identified the two Windows 7 systems that we want to update. So we can export this as an XLS report so that we can send it on to the people who can take action with it. It's important to note that the discovery of both servers and endpoints can occur within Universal Discovery and Universal Seem to be at the same time, which makes it much easier to manage these devices and increases your return on investment. Thank you for your time today. If you wish any further details about Universal Discovery or Universal CMDB, please reach out to any one of the three of us, Doran Orbach or myself as product managers, or Wes Heaps as our product marketing manager for the, the UCMDB and Universal Discovery tools. You can also go to the MicroFocus CMDB site to get information about the product as well as trials. Thank you very much.